Whoa, critical hit. <laughs> right off the bat. I don't know why. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Blah, 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 things dropping into the cup. How we doing? You made it to a live stream. Brian made it. Yes. All right. Blade's here. Henry's here. Sweet. Pedro. Good evening from Portuguese guy in the UK. How's it going? Four tracks. Numero uno. Numero uno. Seamus is here. How's it going? Yubi. Hello. 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 Oh, how's it going, everybody? How's it going? So happy to be here. So happy to be here. So, um, you guys are the faithful, right? You guys are like the first ones here. So, um, you probably, those of you that want a Dig Uno board, hopefully probably already have one. If not, um, you probably saw that I put out a, just like a promo video to say, Hey, we've got them, you know, cause I meant to do that when we first started selling those months ago, a couple months, at least ago. And, uh, so we put it out. I finally put it out Saturday when I got some new boards in stock and I woke up this morning, they're all gone. <laughs> so it wasn't even 12 hours and, uh, they're all gone. So I'm sorry, uh, but we'll get some more as soon as we can. <laughs> I just keep thinking, well, you know, it, it kind of slowed down. Like we, we, we initially, we first got them and it went, sold a bunch. And then, you know, it's been kind of just slowly. I just put it on the website when I get back in stock. And this time I put out that video, I should have known that something was going to happen. And sure enough, boy, sold them all out in like one night. So we'll get some more. I'll, I'll try to try and do a bigger, bigger batch next time. All right. Clayton, how's it going? Clayton, you were asking me for some help and I can't remember now what it was. Did I help you? I think you made a comment on a video. I can't remember if it was a comment on a video or something in Discord or Facebook, but did you get the help you needed? All right, Frank's here. Ooh, and the bot's working. Yes. Good work, Blade. Thank you, sir. Oh, shoot. I was going to email you something. Set up an email in stock notification. That's a good idea. Guys, how's it going, buddy? I was supposed to. I remember. Now I remember. I forgot, obviously, prior to right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. We need one of these already. It's one of those days. Where's my bear? There's my fail. There's my fail. <laughs> oh, man. Brendan's here. Fantastic. Piston broke. Sweet. So sweet. So, was it how to fix the weather card? Okay. So it wasn't you asking me something. It was you helping me. That's even better. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I do need to set up an in-stock uh, notification. Who should I email it to? Everybody? Just like all at world.email? <laughs> Will, you touched your first Shelly's. You like it? What do you think? I saw Frank had, uh, Frank posted something that said, uh, he had a um, new Shelly's. All oh, right, Stove Doc just resubscribed. Let's do the unicorns. Thank you, sir. Helped your brother install two Shelly 2.5s in the bathroom fan boxes. Nice. They work well, don't they? It's good for that. Want to become famous? Oh, oh. Bigfollows.com. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be happy to help with the did you know do you like soldering we're actually getting them made uh um quindor's getting them made somewhere china probably somewhere i don't know i just get them from him he sends them to me but that's yeah i mean i don't know what to do about that maybe that'd be a good idea highly recommend lever nuts lever nuts mixed feelings fixed short wires a little too thin. Disappointed, to be honest. You mean inside of it? Oh, the i3. Ooh, I don't know what the Shelly i3 is. Followed your advice about notifications, but still get the API error in node red when I deploy. Hmm. Something's wrong. I mean, if that API error means like that, that command is not getting to Home Assistant. So something's wrong in the structure of that, of that uh, call service node. Um... Maybe there, maybe it's something in the, cause you've got a part there, right? Ooh, touch my face. You've got a part there where you put in like the message and stuff. Maybe that's where it's wrong. Whoa. I was talking in the wrong chat. Hey, Mark. <laughs> oh, there's Frank. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. I had not seen this device. 
I had not seen this device. No, it's not 3D rent. Is the title say 3D resin? It shouldn't. I, I, I got carried away. I got carried away and I started the stream before I had changed the title. So the title should be, the title should be like Home Assistant 113. Nope. See, I need to change it. Let's change it right now. I changed it too late. So we're going to change it right now. Because what I thought we could do, I know uh, when I said this on the stream last time, was let's do, I guess I have to go to the studio. Um, let's do the changes from for Home Assistant 113. Thank you, Mark, for subscribing. Whee! The changes for 113 are pretty cool. I was, I've read through them. And I've thought about, do I have any automations that take advantage of that? And I'm not sure. We'll have to look through some, but maybe we can make some or at least talk about the changes. I think I understand them well enough to talk about them. And we've got Frank here. So, you know, when you got Frank here, you're pretty much golden, right? Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Come on, you. Uh, video, sorry. Pardon the interruption while I update the title while we're live, because that's what the pros do. Oh, so how's everybody doing? Sweltering hot everywhere you all live? It's been pretty hot here, I gotta say. I gots to say. Ooh. I, <laughs> I, lost, I lost like 200 subscribers somehow. No, they didn't like my, they didn't like my video. Okay. We're going to go to the live videos. And then the live, not in the UK. It's been hot here, man. Wowza. Wowza. All right, here we go. We're going to edit this one. Edit the details and we're going to, oh no, yeah, it should be there. Okay. Well, maybe that, maybe it just, you need a refresh or something. Cause it's, the title should be home system. One, one, three big changes for automation actions. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is there. Okay. Well, good. Well, good. Then let's check it out. You fixed it already. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, an official Shelly integration. There's a, there's a really good Shelly, um, there's a really good Shelly custom component, um, stove dock. There's a really good Shelly custom component. I talked about it in the video about the Shelly dimmer, I believe. And 99F. Ooh, that's too hot. That is too hot. Too hot. Okay. So let's talk about, let's go ahead. Let's jump right into it. And let's talk about Home Assistant 113. Hey, Melvin. Keaton's here. Yay, Keaton. Yay, Keaton. Okay, release notes. So we kind of went through this quickly on, was it Tuesday night? I believe it was Tuesday night. Hey, Quindor's here. How's it going? How's it going? How fast can we get some more boards? <laughs> Oh, that's a good problem to have. Uh, somebody commented on this earlier too. This is awesome. Ludius has joined Nabucasa. That's great. And if uh, for anybody who doesn't know who Ludius is, at least uh, one of his major contributions, he's been contributing for a long time, but one of his major contributions is the Home Assistant Community Store. He put all that together and has done a great job. Um, so yay, Ludius joined Nabucasa. Awesomeness. All right. Uh, so the big changes in 113 have to do with uh, actions in an automation when, if you have an automation that does maybe several things in an action, has a delay or, I mean, it just, maybe it's a thing that takes time, like a window closing, um, trying to think of some other ones, maybe an, I don't know if an alarm arming would qualify. But if, it, if the actions in your automation take some time to uh, finish, then if that automation gets re-triggered, what had happened before, I can't remember which part, of, which, which had happened before. I think what would have happened before was it would, it would just stop the automation and do the, do the next step. So if it was on a step, like if it was on a delay, so say you had an action, he's, he's got an example, Frank has an example in here of a light. The light turns on, waits so many seconds, and then turns off or something. 
And if you re-trigger the automation when it's in the middle of that delay, maybe, it would skip that step. Like it would cut that step off. So if say it was a five minute delay and at two minutes, somebody pushes the button again. At that point, it would cut that step off where it is and it would jump to the next step in the action. So, uh, and Frank makes a, a good reminder point here. An action uh, is a script. So things happen in a specific order. Whatever order you put them in, that's the order that they happen in. If something's, if, if you've got several things there, prior to 113, if you were in the middle of, a, of an action and the automation re-triggered, it would s stop at whatever step it is and go to the next step and carry on. Now, and so that was, and you had no choice. That was just what was going to happen. You couldn't do anything about it. Now we have the option to change how that behavior works in each automation. So you could have an automation that works that way. Fine. Um, you could have, so, uh, let's see which one I think, I don't know if maybe we can't actually, we don't have one that would work the same way that it did. Right. These are the, these are the, now the options that you have single restart queued and parallel. I guess this warning, this is the default. It sends a warning. So where does that warning go? I didn't look at that. Does the warning just go to notifications or something? But it looks like the actions just continue. So if the automation gets re-triggered in the middle of setting off all of its actions, it'll just keep on trucking. All right. So that's single. You don't have to do anything about that. In restart, if the automation actions are progressing and somebody re-triggers the automation, it will now restart. It'll go back to the beginning and it will restart. Keep on going. Okay, cool. Um, queued is another option and it does kind of what you see here. It will start going and then say you re-trigger it here. It will just keep on going, but when it gets to the end, it will remember, oh yeah, that's right. You triggered this a second time. So it'll start the process of all those actions again. Okay. And then parallel runs in parallel. So whenever the second trigger happens, the first action starts over again. And I was going through this. Does that that diagram is easily understood. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, for sure. This, this made all the sense in the world. Like this is what you need to know. If you, if you understand this diagram, then you understand what each of those options or modes we're calling them, right? What each of those automation action modes will do. And it's already integrated into the user uh, interface automation editor. So if you go to your automations editor and you want to make a new automation, uh, let's just use one that I already made. Oh, that's fine. We'll do a new one. So here, right here at the top is the mode. And you can pick single, which is the default. If you don't do anything, it stays as single. Or if you want this to be one that restarts when it re-triggers, or queued or parallel, you just select it right there. Pretty sweet, yeah? Pretty sweet. Questions? Already triggered. I'm busy. <laughs> Threading 101, singular parallel queued. Is that is that a, a a normal term for this kind of stuff? Probably is, right? So programmers will understand that language. User interface automation editor gadget making web interface interlaced form. <laughs> I right. Yep, they should all know that. Good, good, good. Those are fairly normal terms. Good. Well, they're new terms for me. Not really. I mean, they're kind of common words, but uh, certainly that's not something that I think about. So that's good. Uh, errors and warnings with the single going to the home assistant logs. Okay, cool. All right, Croth is here. Hallelujah. Okay. Pretam has asked a question a couple times, so let's answer. WLED in auto effect and change mode run. So you wanna know if there is an auto change mode for the effects in WLED, not by default. There's not an option that you can choose that just uh, cycles through different ones. What I would do if that was what I wanted to do is I would set it up in the macros. All right, Mark Jennings, thank you for subscribing, Mark. Here's some planes for you for three months. 
So what I would do if I was going to try and do that pre Tom is uh, go make a make a macro. And in your macro, so this is a macro. This is just an example. I don't even remember what this one does. But uh, in the documentation for WLED, it tells you what these different things are. So T equals one is something. R equals one twenty four. Some that's red, green, blue. So this is setting a color. Is what that's doing. SX that might be setting a. Oh, this is setting the effect. And this is setting the night or maybe that's a time. So what you could do is you set a macro and in the macro, you can just say for this long, run this effect, then switch to this effect and run it for this long and then switch to this effect and run it for this long and switch to this effect and run it to that long. Okay. That's how you would do it. Hydrate. Cheers. What are we talking about? I got butterflies on my mind. Sorry, Henry. Butterflies. Yeah, tell me what you were talking about, Henry. I was trying to figure that out. You sent me a message that said something about butterflies going in a shadow box. <laughs> I didn't end up uh, making the... Oh, my gosh. Jay Sizzle, you're trying to kill me. Give me a heart attack. <laughs> that is the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um all right so do we need more examples of this what on earth was that yeah that's uh that's a, a twitch thing it's a twitch thing blade you can go into twitch and for bits which are pennies basically yeah it wasn't Seamus this time <laughs> yeah, or four tracks um yeah you can go in there with bits and you can play sounds and the sounds come through and it makes that little little thing up on the screen. So, so there you go. Pre Tom. The other thing, uh, the only other thing I will do for you, uh, on that is, well, let's go to the WLED wiki and, uh, get the commands for you. Zoom in my browser. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. I need that anyways for my bad eyeballs. Uh, so then macros and H, this is what you want. HTTP request API. So here are all of the parameters that you can use. Uh, so if you're going to want different LED effect, yeah, here we go. The LED effect index. So this is the numbers of the effects. So zero is default. And I guess there's 101 now. Nice. So. You go back here, back, back. All these effects, there's 101. So this one is zero. Sheesh. Solid is zero. And all the way down to 101, I guess. Right? Um, you can change the intensity. In, but if you want it to just simply jump from one thing to the next to the next, you're going to want to set it to a certain effect. FX equals some number. And then there's going to be a time here. Time, time, time. Time, 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 general. Uh, where they, what, which one the time is. Let's search for time. There we go. There we go. PT equals cycle time in each preset. Bingo. <laughs> so you're going to have a bunch of PT equals something. Oh, well, that's only going to cycle your presets. Oh, that's not what we want. We don't want it to just cycle presets. Well, then let's keep looking. Current time, time, countdown mode, toggle real time. Uh-oh. There's got to be a timer in there, right, guys? There's got to be a timer in there. Lag? I don't know, maybe. No prime sub available on mobile? Oh, man. Well, thank you, the ginger. Thank you, ginger, when you get to the PC. Look at my GH node red local control in Discord. Okay. Oh, yeah, you told me about that, Reese. That's right. That's right. I haven't uh, revisited that. Where is it? Reese is sending a message to everybody that says, go find out about 
Google Home Local Control in Discord. There's some nodes. Here's a couple nodes you need. If you want, if you want, go Google Home Local Control in Node Red. Talk to talk to Reese. Talk to Reese. Is it duration? Maybe that's duration. Maybe that's what I need, not time. Thank you. That's a good point. Nightlight toggles nightlight. Oh, dang. It's got to be there. Come on. There's got to be a, a certain, just a delay. Maybe it's a delay. Nightlight delay. Somebody knows. Somebody knows. Hey, Dion, how's it going? Can I make a video on X lights using Arduino? No. <laughs> Albert, uh, what do you, so using an Arduino, you want the Arduino to be like the receiver? Um, I mean, that's the, what you'd have to have. Is it running like E131? I would think. All right. Prime subscribe. Thank you. The ginger. What would you like? Unicorns or planes? So unicorns or planes or something else? Dr. Flipper. Yeah. Tell me more about what you're looking for, Albert. What is the latest version? 110. 110 is the latest version. Nick just started using WLED. It is awesome. Long time no see. Hey, Dion, how you been, man? There's got to be a timer in there. <laughs> IO Stream 21, you'd like to advertise your project. How much would it cost? Send me the information about your project and probably would cost you nothing. Click on the video subscription will be on the right hand side. Oh, there you go. You guys got it. Your firefighters telling them how to subscribe for mobile. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know where it's. I don't know where it's at in here, pre Tom. It's but it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did it. I'm pretty sure I did it. And the other thing you could do, I guess, is you can use the cycle presets one, right? I mean, if you go down here to the presets, uh, presets section here. You can, you, what you'd have to do then is just go to each set, each of your presets. So 16 of them and then cycle through, set it to cycle and cycle through, um, toggle preset cycle. That's probably a good thing to do. And then you, you know, 16 is probably enough. You'd probably really don't want it to cycle through all 101 of them. Not all of them are going to look good. And if you have it like going for five minutes on each one, you've got like, You'll have five minutes of like, like strobing. And by that time, the neighbors will have all seized. <laughs> hey, Ron, Ron, what are we doing today? We've been talk. We were talking about, um, we were talking about the uh, new changes in automations for Home Assistant. Meaning to ask, where are you on the job, Captain Medic, and an engine? Oh, you're talking about firefighters. Oh, cool. Uh, code download and unzipped ring MQTT. How to get ring MQTT to show up in hacks. Check the front end and integrations. Oh, I don't know what ring MQTT is. We could look at it. An overview of how you set up Z-Wave lock. I don't have a Z-Wave or a lock. That is Z-Wave compatible. Sorry, buddy. Maybe though, maybe if I had one, I could tell you, sorry. But there's probably somebody else here who does. Maybe maybe they could help you. Sorry, Dietrich. Doesn't that just make you want to fall asleep? Hit that thumbs up, Charles says. The chooser in the automations. Let's walk through. Let's make some automations. I'm trying to think of a, an, of an example. Wait, I'm already squirreled. I was going to do uh -huh. something else a second ago. What was it? I thought you could use an Arduino to control the LEDs and then have X lights. Uh, you probably could. Um, I don't know exactly how to do it on an Arduino. I know how to do it on all these ESP8266 devices. These The ESP8266 devices can use um, E131. There's probably a way to do that with an Arduino, but I don't know what it is. So... If you, what, what I would look for, I can't, I certainly can't do a video for you about it. Cause I don't know how to do it. Um, like that's ever stopped me before. All right. <laughs> we got our Hinyu subscribed. Um, 
if you look up if you can have an Arduino receive E131. That's it. How do I find Reese info? Uh, C Black uh, in uh, in Discord. There you go. Seamus has got you connected. Just go to Discord and then look for. I don't. Reese has several accounts. I think it's the real Bitwarden Reese. <laughs> yes, uh, it's it's Reese. Reese has it. Reese has it. Reese has it. What's the link, Reese? All I've got is those ones. All I have is this one so far. Pop it in Node Red. Put it in the Node Red channel. Bot doesn't work on YouTube anymore. No. No. Oh yeah, that was what I was supposed to fix with Blade. Node Red. Node Red. Good evening. What are we gonna ruin today? I don't know. Something good. Um, let's look up. Okay, let's let's make mental order here. We're gonna do ring MQTT just because I'm curious. I have not heard of this before. And then we'll do another automation. We'll do an automation um, with the automation editor and see what it looks like. All right, ring MQTT. Script leverages excellent ring client API to provide a bridge between MQTT and supported ring devices. Alarm control panel, lights, cameras. It also supports Home Assistant style MQTT discovery, which allows for simple Home Assistant integration with minimal configuration. Ooh, including all an optional HassIO add-on for users on that platform. It can also be used. What the heck? Uh, is it going to use with my doorbell? Contact motion sensors, camera devices, doorbell events. Okay, I need this. I need this. I needs it. Now here's the part where I skip all the instructions and just start trying to poke around. <laughs> Let's look at this HassIO add-on. Add-on provides integration of Ring devices into HassIO using Ring MQTT script. Currently, most alarm devices are supported as well as camera functions. Camera support is disabled by default since these are supported via native Ring component in Home Assistant, but can be enabled if you prefer to use the support here. I do. This add-on requires an MQTT broker. Okay, we got that. Configuration. I missed what somebody did over there on the subscribing or whatever, so here's this. <laughs> Uh, ring now requires two-factor authentication. Maybe that's why mine hasn't been working. All right, well, let's start with uh, the add-on. Let's just do the add-on store. Uh, is it already in? Can we just add? We can see if it's already here. Probably not, but we can try it. Nope. So then we'll have to add a new repository, right? Right. Da -da 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 -da. Or is it in? Is it the Home Assistant Community Store? Is that where it is? Because that's, I think of it now. So what adds the Ring MQTT bridge compared to the native Home Assistant integration? Uh, I don't know. Is it other devices maybe? Who was who brought this up? I I I have to admit I have I gave up on the I gave up on Ring and Home Assistant a while ago, and I haven't revisited it, and it probably works better now than when I tried it, which was like two years ago. So it's probably better. Last I checked, I couldn't, if I didn't have a subscription for Ring, I couldn't do the integration. But it's been a long time and somebody told me that that's not quite the way it goes anymore. All right, Tony, you got to go. Night shift awaits. Oh, I got to do the night shift tonight too. It's been massively be visited. Okay. Maybe we should revisit that. 
Bearded Tinker's here. <whistles> to allow contact. You're welcome, Robert. Do I still have the same LEDs installed on your house with the plastic J channel? So far, Sean, I do, but maybe not forever. Because we do have the um we do have the the channeling available now. It's 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 here. You can order it now. I haven't made like a big major announcement, and but I will. But you can order it if you go to RGB Man. This is the stuff. Oh, I think I need to. Maybe it's in the store, online store. Yep, permanent lighting. It's here. You can go here and order it. It, we need to put more pictures and update the store some, but yeah, we went, uh, we got it in and it's in Mike's garage and we went and installed it. And so it's here. It is here. That's like a little mini, little mini announcement. Thank you, Jay Sizzle. The only solution for two integration is Tasmoda. Alex IT not doing something about it. Alex IT should be working still. Is Marcelo, is Alex IT not working? The Tasmoda thing's not working. I gotta admit, I don't use it a ton, so I don't know. Got the code in hacks. Says it should be in. We can't find it. We are bouncing around today pretty bad. Let's find an integration. Oh, it should be in front end? I don't think it should be in front end. I think it should be here. Huh. Yeah, it's not there. Oh, so anybody have this thing working? Hey, Tech Turtle. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. I still got your LED sitting here, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Sonoff land. Oh, the, and Tuya sucks. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. The, Alex IT, uh, he did the Sonoff one. I got gotcha. you. I remember. I remember. <laughs> I guess I should go reset up a Pi for Hyperion now that I have the new fixed version out. A bunch of us couldn't get it to work last week. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about that. So, yes, this is a good time to to discuss that. So, uh, I promise I didn't pull any shenanigans. Like, when I when I set up those the, the Hyperion on the Raspberry Pi and made the videos, I didn't. I didn't change anything, but then something in some package changed. And so if you installed the latest Raspberry IO and then did a apt get update and upgrade, something changed. And then when you would try and start Hyperion, you could not get to the user interface. And a lot of people had that problem and I felt horrible about it, but not much I could do. We, it was addressed in the comments of the video. Some people talked about it and um, I guess I should have. Maybe I could put something in the video description. But anyways, that's great to hear. So now there's a new version of Hyperion that works with it. It's it's back to functioning. No, 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 no. It's not where I want. Oh, this is not Hyperion Project. What I want is Hyperion NG. Next generation. There we go. Now let's find the code. Let's find the releases. Mm -hmm. Releases page. Well, so now there's a seven. Sweet. Okay, so seven works now, right? Is there a place you can send it? Ray, you can try, you can post it in Discord or you can email it to me maybe if it'll let you. Sometimes, it, depending on what kind of file it is, it doesn't always let you. No, Tech Turtle, I have not set up my Culp yet. 
I've been trying, I've been trying to get out videos. Uh, I've got a backlog of things I need to get out. I need to get out one for the, the Zigbee, the Sonoff Zigbee stuff. Thank you for subscribing. I need to get out one for the Sonoff Zigbee stuff. And, um, oh, did I say the magic word? Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyways, oh, this ring Zigbee. MQTT, I'll have to play with it. And if you guys play with, want to play with it and check it out, then do it and let me know how it goes. Hilarious. He's hilarious. He is hilarious, isn't he? He's a fun guy. Uberto, thanks for being here. Sent me a message in Discord, Henry did. Use LED lights in the shadow box with your artwork. Oh, I see. I see. Got a notification. All right. Closing down all that. We are just totally squirrel-rated today. <laughs> He's a fun guy. Da -dum bum da -dum bum bum Try to add the repo with the link on that page. So you're talking about, you're talking about uh, this one. Um, so if you add this link here, or is there a link that says it? This add-on requires a broker. We got that configuration, two-factor authentication, which I haven't set up yet. You can access this URL manually. Simply click the open web UI button and add-on page. This will access a simple form that accept the ring username and password. Yeah, but that's once we have the add-on actually installed. We haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want to fumble through this right now. I want to try it, but I'm not sure I want to fumble through this right now. Yes, Hyperion has WLED support that sure does. Athama, Athami. I thammy. Yes, it it sure does. Absolutely does. Uh, and in that video, I talk about how to get it to output to WLEDs. Click on this green code button. Oh, get this one. Oh, that's the same one. All right, and then we go back here. And add-on store. Repositories. Add a repository like that. It's probably not going to work. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, it worked. <laughs> there it is. Ring has IO add on. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's no, okay. So just install. We'll do that. <laughs> Mother Russia needs you. You want to make automation. For hypersonic missiles in home assistant. <laughs> I can do that. Using ha Hubitat and buying some devices. Awesome. Uter, uter. I have a Hubitat here. I haven't done much with it, but um, it's a good, it's a good product. It's a good product. I don't know that I'll switch, but it's, it's good for some things. Ring add-on. It's great. Oh, good. Marlon's got it. Seriously. <laughs> was that what you couldn't do, Ray? Or was that, was that, uh, what happened? I'm contracted. Great. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Stranger Things. <laughs> Ramses, is this going to be like Stranger Things with the Russians? Managed to keep transparency. Is there any tips? Lost it on Threative's blue theme. Th Threative's blue theme did break. Yes, his blue theme did break. So I don't know if he's going to need to switch something or there's... A bit, I'm sure if you look through the uh, release notes, there's probably something in there about it. Um, I don't know how to fix it. All I did was change to a different theme. <laughs> oh, and you missed how I did it. Oh, <laughs> just back. So what I did, uh, what I did, Ray was I went to this here and I grabbed, and this was somebody else told me how to do it. I just was following along what somebody else said. So I copied this um, link right here. And then in Home Assistant, I went to the uh, add-on page here, add-on store, click the dots, repositories, scroll down and where it says add repository, I pasted in that 
uh, information that I copied here, the link from there. And then I just hit add. And that added it, that added the repository. This right here popped up. This ring has IO add-on popped up. And then uh, I searched for ring. And it was there. It's right here. And so I clicked on that. And it took me to the add-on page. And then I installed it. And I'm not going to do the configuration. I'm sure I have to do something here. Yeah, so I need my MQTT username and password, my ring token. And then I can... Uh, start it up. So I'm going to do that offline. I think, what do you guys think? Is that okay? And that gets, that gets uh, Ray going and you can keep going. You can keep on doing it, Ray, and then you can come back and teach me. And Charlie's here. De Reynosa, La Polvosa. How's it going, man? South Texas, Hurricane Hannah. Oh man, that's awful. New Netflix series about, uh oh, breaking bed. Oh, nice. Nice. Very nice. Uh, which theme did I switch to? A uh, good question. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, kibidi, kibit, kibit, kibibit, kibibit, kibibit. All right, kibibit. What else were we gonna do? We were gonna do automations. Did you guys want to do automations in uh, automations editor? I understood that it was one of the best hubs. Smart things. Smart things that smart things was one of the best hubs. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. Um, you mean Hubitat? Hubitat's got some advantages, but I just barely started it. And I got to say that it's not, it's not like it's just plug and play. It's, you do have to do some setup uh, with adding things and it's all new terminology and, um, so far, what I would say that the, the, and I, and I haven't played with it very much, but the main attraction would be it's got Amazon Echo and Google Home without a subscription, but you also pay $150 for the thing. So, uh, RTL433, yeah, I believe so. No, no, smart things, no good. See, Marlon says smart things, no good. Let's do automations. Okay, let's do. Let's walk through the automation. So let's let's uh, pick an automation. We'll do an automation using some of this new stuff. Okay, and let's do it. Uh, the new modes. So, what would be another good example of something that would be a uh, an automation we could use these modes? You got it from Hibbert's video. Oh, it's good. Don't, don't, no, it's okay. It's good. <laughs> I, th I, Thammy, it's good. It's good. Don't, don't let me tell you it's not good. Don't let me tell you it's not good. Um, I haven't played with it that much. I don't know how much Paul has played with it. It does have like Zigbee and Z-Wave built into it. So th it's, there's good things about it. I promise there's good things about it and you'll, you'll enjoy it. It'll be fine. It'll be good. Don't, don't cry. <laughs> it's going to be all right. The light toggle switch and then try the different modes. While you spam a button, nah, that'll be that'll work, right, Quindor? Let's just do it that way. Let me think about which um, how I can do that. Oh, I know what I'll do. We could do it with a Z-Wave button and my desk light. Okay, we'll do that. Let me grab a button. I think I said Z-Wave. I meant Zigbee. I don't have any Z-Wave. If you're doing Home Assistant, smart things is not really need or helpful. That's true. I wouldn't go with smart things. Hubitat, we'll see. Like, I have not done it. I've not given it a full on. Um... <laughs> Ramses. <Yeah. laughs> uh, I've, I've published my coordinates, actually, so that'd be fine. Oh, man, that's funny. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee. We'll do it again. I gotta be careful. Oh, I don't wanna play it every time oh, I say the word. <laughs> um, okay, so I do have a button here. Uh, so let's start an automation. We're gonna start an automation. The first one we will do, uh, we'll skip this. We're gonna say, we're gonna just call this the, um, the single, the single test. And that's because single is the mode, or we'll call it single mode test, right? Single mode test, okay. Device. I liked using devices. I'd, I'd, I'd set up a couple automations this way. Um, 
for like the, I, I set up one for the boy's bedroom where if it didn't de- detect motion, it would turn off the lights. And I put a, I had to replace a light switch in the laundry room. So I put a door sensor. So it worked. Anyways, ooh, sorry. Anyways, I used devices instead of, cause I was always an entity. I thought in entities, but, um, uh, device, uh, is a good way to do it too. I don't have an, I don't have a watch actions. That would be fun though. Going to put it for sale again. Anyone want to buy it? <laughs> oh, I thought, I mean, I think you'd like it. I mean, maybe uh, if uh, try eBay, I don't know. maybe, maybe somebody here would want to buy it. Yes. Yeah, so Yona's got the coordinates. Yes. Send the coordinates to Ramsey so he can send me a rocket to test. <laughs> How do I think that's so funny? Uh, we're going to, we're going to start an international crisis here and I'm laughing about it. Some men just want to watch the world burn. All right. So the device, the action is going to be this, this, uh, Sonoff Zigbee button. Okay. Uh, so we're going to pick Zigbee. Uh Oh, mm, that makes me wonder if I actually, if I actually included it. Well, now I have to, now after all saying all that, I'm going to try entity instead. Oh, I should be able to find it. Let's, let's back up a minute. Let's find it. Let's find it. Let's find that device. I want to find that device. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in my ZHA, which I should have a, I need to put a button in there for ZHA, don't I? It's in the integrations. ZHA. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Is this it? WB01? No. All that's giving me is. I think that I thought that was it. But all it's giving me is this power. Door PIR. Okay. Well, let me see if I got a different button. How about this one? This has got to be the right button. Why is it not uh, showing up? That's funny. All right, we're going to pair it because I really want to use this button. Okay. I got to use this button. Listen for ZHA event, event developer tools. Push it. It'll show the ID in has. Okay. Well, now I deleted it. IKEA five button remote. Ooh, I haven't done that. All right, Miss Ely, Miss Ely, do some of this. Device not found. Okay, so now it deleted the device. So now we're going to repair the device. Configure. We're going to add a device. Here we go. Hold this. Oh, no, I don't know what the hell this one down. This one, I have to press the button. That's right. Oh, we're doing it the hard way. Okay. Ah, that was easy. We're going to change the name. We're going to call it the Sonoff Zigbee button. Mini button. It's kind of small. Mini button. Okay, done. You like how smooth that went? First time, every time. <laughs> Guillermo, I'm inspiring you to automate something. Fantastic. Automation is fun and awesome. Awesomation. Did I just make up a word? Awesomation. All right. So now if we go back here and we look at the devices, we should have a Zigbee mini button. Why is all it giving me this? So you tell me it's not going to give me an actual button press. It's just going to give me the power. That ain't right. So I got to go to the events. I don't want to go to the events. That ain't right. 
Clicked a lot of times, sync button, other buttons. CJ found it. Okay. What hardware? I am using the $4 Zigbee, uh, whatever dang thing. But it's not working. Um, now I got to switch to some events. Oh, man. Event type. Uh, ZHA event. Right? Oh, no, I want to listen for ZHA event. Start listening. Press L button O. There it is. Dang. That's not as easy. The Sonoff Zigbee USB thing. Yep, that's it. That's the one. Pre flashed, four bucks. You cannot beat that. You cannot beat it. You can find the event in the device automations. Oh, awesome. Gosh, Frank, you're so awesome. Thanks for being here. Imagine what a imagine what a cluster this would be without Frank and all of you. All right, so now I want event and event type. Can I do it like this? And then for event data, I'm going to need something here, right? I've not done this before. This is new. This is new for me. Um, I want to press it again every time. No, it's not doing anything. Now it's not doing... Oh, I have to start listening again? Oh, there we go. So, is that the same device? Yeah, it's this. It's this unique ID. Go to automation. Select trigger device. Select your device from the list. Then select event. Oh, I didn't think the device was there. But maybe the device is... So see, the device isn't there unless it would be Zigbee coordinator, that device. See, my device isn't there. That's the problem. That's a problemo. Mini button, there it is. But no actions, see? No actions. All right, we'll refresh. We'll start over. I added after I had the list. Okay. Mini button. Oh, there it goes. Except for now it's the per percentage. It's just giving me the percentage. Because it's only telling me all it, all it can tell me is that the battery's low. Right? So there's no, there's no event here. What? <laughs> yeah, it only has, I think it's because it, well, I don't know. Maybe not supported with device automations yet. Oh, good. Well, hey, there you go. So anyways, that's, uh, that's one way to do it. <laughs> so let's go, let's do the event. Event type, I think I could do ZHA uh, event. This is good because hard way it is then. <laughs> We're doing it the hard way. ZHA event, and then I need the data. Can I just do this unique ID? I think I probably could, right? I could probably do any of these. Event type, ZHA event, and then data. I just need one of these. And I mean, I could use all of that, but I don't really need all of it, do I? Do I speak Spanish? C. Speak good Spanish, not English. Yeah, I do probably have an Acquire button. We are making this so much harder than it needs to be. We're not even going to do the 
right stuff. Actually, though, my acquire button is going to be the same. My acquire button is going to be the same. No, I don't speak the Netherlands. <laughs> I wish I did. I would love to learn. Send me a free button and I'll add it. I'll, uh, so these are Sonoff buttons. You should have a pipeline. Um, all right, let's just do a different, let's just do a different trigger for Pete's sake. Let's just do, we're not going to do a real event. Okay, we're going to do this. Yes, I want to delete that. We're just going to skip the Zigbee buttons for now. Zigbee buttons, uh, bye bye Okay, no more Zigbee buttons. We're going to do a helper. We're going to make a toggle. And we're just going to call it action, action mode, test. Okay. Action mode test. Now, can I put this somewhere? I want to put this. Can I add it to Lovelace? Cannot very easily add it to Lovelace. <laughs> I'm going to go back here to my main. We're going to go to the lab. No, we'll go to my main page. Just make it easy. Add a button. Button. Action test mode button. Save. Done. Now we can push this button and that will be how we trigger. We're just going to make it easy this time. The Xiaomi, oh, it would work with device automations. Oh, I see. Nunca he probado Aquara. Ooh, Aquara is awesome. Debe. Puedes ayudarme con Home Assistant? Okay, here we go. Back to this, starting back to where we were like at the beginning an hour ago. Okay, single uh, mode test. All right, we're going to do single. Trigger a state of action test button. Okay, that's it. I don't care which, well, let's make it go from on to off. Fine. Okay. And then action device. Let's try my dimmer lamp dimmer. Awesome. Turn on lamp dimmer. Okay. And then we're going to add another action. This time it's going to be a delay. The delay is going to be 60 seconds. Can I do that? How does the delay need to be formatted? I don't remember. Unsupported action. Oh, wait, 0%. I want 0%. I want 100%. Whoa, Marlin. How about Pig Latin? Oh, man, don't make me do that. But thank you. <laughs> um, delay, 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 delay. I think it's got to be like this: zero, 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 one, zero, zero. That should be one minute in delay, right? Then we're gonna add an action, and we're gonna do the same device, and we're gonna go dimmer, lamp dimmer, and we're gonna tell it to turn off. Okay, how does that look? So this is basically the exact same example. Um, this is the exact same example as Frank has in the uh, re release notes for 113. So really not, we're not doing anything real creative here, but whatever. Yeah, we're going to give it a try. Uh, this will be to show the states. All right, so here we go. We're going to save this. Okay, and uh, it's going to take a minute because it just has to kind of reload before it's totally ready. So we'll go out here to the beginning and we'll we'll just give it a minute. I will answer a let's turn this to 
Oh, you know what? This isn't showing the state. Okay, it's in the middle of reloading the automation, so it's kind of giving me funkiness. Not using Home Assistant currently, but this format and live stream is excellent. Well, thank you, Uter Uter. Need this exact format for Hubitat. <laughs> Turn on notifications for you as well. Great job. Thank you, Uter Uter. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to really tell you. Oh, yeah, it did. It did show it. I don't know that I'll be able to tell you too much about Hubitat, but I'll sure try. Hey, where'd it go? Where did my button go? There it is. So this is on now. That's oh. Okay, so I turned it on. Let's wait. How did I set the strips to flash red and blue in the alarm video? I set it to, I set a preset and then I just told it to play that preset. I can show you my alarm, uh, my alarm automation. So in one minute, this should go off. So while we're waiting for this, what do we got here? Printer power button, condition template. Voy a buscarlo. <laughs> Saw your video from you. What are the voltage of the strips? Five volts. Five volts. Those are five volt strips. Freak. Freak subscribe. Thank you, Freak. Maybe one minute was too long. <laughs> oh, there it went. It just turned off. Okay. So now we're going to do it where I kind of jump the gun and turn it on before it's done. Okay. So, so this is, I guess that's off. So I'm going to press the button. It's going to turn on. And then if I press the button again, it's, oh, it's in single mode. So it's not doing it the old way. So it's in single mode. So it won't do anything. It doesn't matter. It's going to wait one minute, no matter what I do. Is there a reason for not using 12 volts? Um, Uberto, most of the inexpensive strips, like the ones you would want to put on the back of your TV are five volts. There are some 12 volt ones. There's the WS, uh, 2815 and 13. I want to say that are, um, I don't remember if 13 is for sure or not, but anyways, there are some 12 volt ones. There are WS2811 12 volt lights that are in strips, but those are three LEDs at a time. So the spacing is really big. So I would just go with the 2812s, which are going to give be nice and inexpensive and they're five volts always. Um, if you wanted to use 2811s like the pixels, then you would want to do 12 volts and you could do that. Um, you just need to do some different power supply stuff. Okay, let's go change that automation now. Okay, so we proved that's what the single does. No matter how many times you press that button, it is going to wait one minute before it finishes. Okay, let's go to the automations and let's just change that one instead of make a new one. Uh, now that I called, I called it single mode test, but now I'm going to change it to not be single mode test. We're just going to call it mode test. And instead of single, now we're going to do restart. Let's predict what's going to happen based on this. So restart. If I press that button, oh, I know where this would be useful. This would be useful in detecting motion because if you detect motion, you want it to start over every time it detects motion for five minutes, right? Otherwise, sometimes it'll turn off after five minutes. I need to change this in my garage door button or my garage lights. So with restart, Every time I click that button to turn it on, it will start the timer over. Well, it will turn it on, but it'll start the timer over for one minute. Change the delay. Okay. Change the delay to 30 seconds. All right. I'm just going to make this anytime I do anything to that also, because that'll make it go faster too. We'll change the delay to 30 seconds. Seamus is very impatient. He's going to scream at me if I don't. Okay. So now anytime I click that button, whether it's on or off, anytime I click it, and then it'll be a 30 second delay. That's wise. I'd like having wise people around to keep me, keep me straight. All right. So we know what it's going to do. Every time I hit that button, it's going to start over that 30 second timer. So this is going to take a really long time. 
I should have made it a 10 second timer, but I'm not going to change it again. No, not going to do it. All right. So here we go. I'm going to turn, click this, turn the light on. I'm going to let it go. Let's make sure that it worked 30 seconds and then we'll start playing. Just make sure it worked. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got 30 seconds for that. <laughs> hey, Robert, this is the first time you've ever made a live stream. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's do some. I like this one. Thanks to you, big red to borrow button. It starts playing careless whispers. <laughs> okay, there we go. 30 seconds. Turn it off. Now, if I turn it on, we're going to wait maybe another 10 seconds or so. And every time I click it, it's going to start over that 30 second timer, right? WS, oh, you are using 15s with 12 volts. Okay. It's a big hassle to integrate into HASIO, waiting for the Node MCU and using your technique for flashing using WLED. Okay, cool. Yeah, you'll like it. It'll be good. It'll be good. So WS, you're going to use, are you going to use uh, just a Node MCU? Perfect. Yeah, that'll work. From Jordan, how's it going, Ahmed? Same for me. Finally made it to the live stream. All right, Bert, thanks for being here, Bert. We're going to do unicorns for you, Bert. So every time I click this, it's going to restart that timer. I wish there was a way to see the timer. Those little uh, animations crack me up. Oh, you're streaming on Twitch too. Do you more stream over there then? I stream both places at the same time every time I stream. I would like to say that I stream more, but I don't stream as often as I'd like lately. At the beginning of quarantine, we did every day, and I did a 12-hour stream. That was awesome. Matthew, subscribe. Matthew, we're going to do Dr. Pepper for you. So this thing is just not turning off. Every time I hit this, it's going to restart that 30 second timer. So we'll do it one more time and then we'll 30 seconds from now, it will finally turn off. Create a timer entity and add to the Lovelace dashboard. Oh, gosh. Then it will. Uh, I've never done that before. I've never done it. I've never done it. Is it under helpers? Frank always likes to have me do things I've never done before when it's live. Date. There it goes. 30 seconds went off. What do you want to input? Just it's like a stopwatch. I've never used one of these before. This will be interesting to see. <laughs> oh man all right i want to i thought there was an integrate into into lovelace button here but maybe not okay we'll go back here and we'll do it we'll do it do it we'll do it do it we'll do it do it and then every time i can put 30 seconds in and it'll just count down is that how that works that'd be super cool if that's what it does Let's just pick an entity, entity, entity. Um, stopwatch. Sweet. So if I go here and I put in, but if I put 30 seconds, what will happen? Will it count down? This isn't what you meant, is it? <laughs> isn't this perfect motion sensor behavior now? Yes, exactly right, Max. Exactly. Exactly. For a living, I am an anesthesiologist. It's not timing. It's not, it's not, it's not going down. <laughs> this is an, I don't know how this thing works. Wrong entity. See the link above. Oh, so sorry. Uh, how about I just turn my phone on? <laughs> just time it the right way. <laughs> that, that's not what you meant, is it? Okay, let's let's go back to our automation now, and we'll try the next the next uh, style, and we'll just pretend that this timer does not exist. The timer of shame. Because <laughs> I don't pay attention very much. All right, Darlo, thank you very much. Here comes some unicorn just to help you soothe. There's a little, little, just count slowly. Yeah. One, two, 
three and I'll watch the subscriber count fall as I do it. <laughs> 22, 23. Oh, man. Yeah, we need to give Frank access to flashing lights. Totally. We 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 never uh, we started doing that paging system, and then we never really got it um, totally up to totally up to perfect. Um, okay, we're going back to our automations, and we're going back to the mode mode tester, and we're going to edit it. All right, now we're going to use queued. Ooh, and queue length is ten. So let's see what happens. For queued and parallel modes, an additional parameter is available to control the maximum number of runs that are waiting, are waiting each other. When omitting this setting, it would default to 10. Okay, so in this case, every time that I click the button again, it's going to add 30 seconds. Think of your, your hot tub timer. For those of you that have a hot tub, I do not have a hot tub. I will probably misuse it. Yeah, that would be fun though. All right. That would be the fun part. <laughs> um, is there a video on the paging system? No, not yet, Nate. It was for, it was a paging system so that uh, some of the mods could page me uh, on my LED lights here in my desk. Misused? No way. <laughs> I don't, I even think we gave Yona, we even gave Yona access, didn't we, Yona? <laughs> Anyways, so the queued, uh, the queued system, uh, it's going to restart or add, basically add 10 seconds or 30 seconds to each one. So let's change that to 10. Let's change this, uh, the delay now. We're going to change the delay to only 10 seconds. Or actually, let's even change it to 5 seconds. That's 50 seconds. Let's change it to 5 seconds. All right. And then we can uh, we can play around with that. That'll be fun. Maximum number, that way 10, it's only going to be 50. That will, that'll be a minute. Thereabouts. I mean, here in the U.S., our minutes are really 50 seconds. I don't know about the rest of the world, but we, we move a little faster. All right. Uh, okay, let's go back here. And it's, it's, it's reloading everything, so give it a minute. Bitwarden, Bitwarden. If you turn off the light before turning it back on, you can immediately see the result of restarting the automation. Oh, Mike, Mike wants to tear a hole in the universe. Okay, we can do that. So it's reloading automation, so it's still a little, there we go, configure UI. I am going to go down here and delete this timer of shame. Timer, delete. Okay, um, now, here we go. Turn it on, five seconds, it'll turn off. Our school hours are only minutes. There it goes, five seconds. Now, if I click it and click it and click it and click it and click it, it's going to be whatever, 20 seconds now. Oh, you see that? It turned off and then back on real quick. Why was that? Maybe it got to the end of one. Oh, it's because it's turning it off and then turning it back on. Oh, so it does let it get to the end of the automation, which, which is totally right. We should have, we should have known that. There is that final step in the automation, which is turn it off. But this is going every time it's going through the delay, turning it off and then turning it back on, going to the delay, turning it off, going through the delay, turning it back on, going through the delay, turning it off, turning it back on, going through the delay. Did I say that right? <laughs> um, um, Marlon wants to know what am I doing for my solar power? I should do a solar video too. This is a, so uh, what I've got up here is what my solar panels are generating. This is because I have um solar what's it called frank we have the same one the same solar inverter i can't remember what it's called but our our my solar inverter has a, an api that home assistant has a nope try again the order was wrong you're right <laughs> I, I, I know i confused myself but you know what i meant uh and then this down here is the um simple circuits i think is what he called it this is a guy here in the us who makes these boards and you plug in a a a, a a transformer around your main wires on your uh, panel or other sub wires if you want, and they will um, show up. And then this, so that will show up what I'm, my house is using right now. Both my air conditioners are running. That's why it's using 10 kilowatts. 
man, I tell you what, look at that. It's uh, two in the afternoon. I've already used 94 kilowatts today. Solar Edge. Thank you. Solar Edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quindor, you have the same one too. I think you do. I think we've talked about this. <laughs> An ideal for making a very slow strobe light. Boop. Boop. Um, and then this is the custom bar card, which is really cool. And you can do a lot of cool stuff. Like it's got this uh, animation, you know, as it's going up. So very cool. Very cool. All right. So that was cued. Now we're going to do parallel. I wonder what's going to happen with parallel. I mean, at some point, wow, 44 panels, 12 kilowatts, man. I wish I had a bigger inverter. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of bummed now that my inverter is so small. We got inverter envy. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. What do we need? We need something else that's new. We'll do the train. I don't think we've done the train. 370, holy cow. Good night, everybody. Athami, thanks for being here. Don't don't get too sad about Hubitat. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Use it for a bit and tell me what you think. SMA. What is SMA? I don't know what SMA is. Solar Edge is pretty easy. And then there's also um, PV Outpost. P pretty much no matter what you use for a solar inverter, if you if you if your solar inverter does any sort of reporting, you should be able to connect it to to um, PV outpost Ooh, and get your data that way. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee. This is for you, Sergeant Silver. It's another inverter brand. Oh, gotcha. Okay. In the UK, you're limited to 3.8 kilowatt inverters. 7.6 is the biggest I can find. Um, and so if I was going to get another inverter, I would probably have, I mean, I, if I wanted more, I would have to get another inverter. So I have enough panels for 11 kilowatts, but my inverter is only 7.6. But anyways, there's probably a reason for that. Uh, so yeah, whatever. All right, let's do parallel. I wonder now with parallel, what's going to happen when it gets to the end? If this one has already started, is it going to flash off and back on again in the middle? Maybe. After Home Assistant 13 seems to be a bit unreliable with scenes, sometimes big delay executing the scene. Interesting. I wonder why that is, Blair. Which scenes specifically and what kind of things are involved in them? Maybe maybe there is something specific. I know there were. If you look at the list of breaking changes, um, it, it, was, it was interesting to me how this, I don't know if this has been formatted like this in the past. Uh, has it, Frank? Frank writes these notes, right? Uh, it, it, you know, like it talks about MQTT and then it says, well, this is, so what might go wrong? Um, but this wasn't really, like, some of these weren't really breaks, I didn't think. But anyways, you can go through here and see if there's something here that would have, that would have tampered with your, um, your scenes. I don't know if they would have or not. That's new formatting. I like this formatting. I like it a lot because I can quickly go through here and see, oh, yeah, I have a Xiaomi thing. You know, what is it? What's going on there? You know, so. I like the formatting. New platforms and integrations are now human readable. You like my dance? This is the time on Sprockets when we dance. Okay. Do you pay him royalties every time you show his video? No, he hasn't asked me for royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. We got to do this one. One more. We got one more. We got one more new mode to test. What time is it? 2.20. Oh, good. We got time. We got time. Uh, da, 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 da. Automations. And mode. Mode test. Edit. Uh, and now we're going to do parallel. So that's it. We're just going to change parallel. And let it reload. Do, 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 do. There are so many Dutch and Belgian people here. I know. It's, I'm like out of place. Like I, I need to be there. I need to go there. Did you put the, uh, yeah, the spam, the Discord. 
I don't, I'm not sure what you mean there. What same for new platforms and integrations are now human readable. When you say human readable, is that that, is that that almond kind of translation thing where you can type it in? Zealand. Jadink hit. Don't know what that means. You have a three phase inverter. Oh man, I do not. Suspect we'll soon see a Stroopwafel animation to satisfy the Dutch viewers. <laughs> is Stroopwafel, is that a food? It, it sounds like a food. All right. Uh, okay, so we should be good here. This should have reloaded by now. So we will click it once. It's going to wait five seconds. It's going to turn it off. I won't do anything else. Amari, how you doing, man? Have not seen you for a while. Okay, good. So now we're going to click it three times. One, two, three. And then what I want to know is if it's going to turn off and on real quick or if the on is going to just override. Yep, off. Was that 15 seconds? Maybe I should do it more times. Okay. Off. It's not working. One time. It's just five seconds. Oh, could it be? Could it be? Let's see what that behavior, what should it be doing here? What should it be doing? Because all it's doing is going five seconds and then off. And it may be. So we have the three actions. We have it all, comes on, it goes a delay, and then it goes off. I think it's because it's so it's it's running, but what's happening, I think, is it's turning it on, it does the delay, it turns it off after this one has already told it to turn on. When when this one tells it to turn on, this one tells it to turn off, and then later this one tells it to turn off. A hypersonic missile at my coordinates. Thank you. Our agent Salisbury will be <laughs> give you the terms of reference. Have you um have you guys watched Space Force on Netflix? Where he, the funniest uh, well not the funniest. There's some funny there's some really funny parts about Space Force on Netflix. His dad is really funny. I thought his dad was hysterical. Um when he talks about hiding under the under the house. <laughs> Yeah. And then the um the Russian like intern who's always trying to steal the who's always trying to steal his secrets is pretty funny. A Dutch snack box? I need a snack box. You don't have to send me one though, because that's expensive from a long ways away, but just tell me how I get one and I'll get one. Okay, so Andre's got a better plan. You're turning it on and when it's off. It's off for all. Yeah, so we need to do something else. My lecture of Brandon Sanderson. Cuba. I love Brandon Sanderson. Wasn't that impressed with Space Force? Oh, I thought it was funny. I thought it was really funny. It was, I mean, it, it, was, it was dumb and funny in weird ways, but there were some really, really funny parts. The stuff about his dad, you know, his senile dad, when he's like, he he uh, tells him he's going to crawl under the house and somebody was looking for him. He was hiding. And it was so funny. Stormlight Archives. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I finished. Um, I finished. Did I finish that one? Yes, I did. And so I'm waiting for the next book, which is supposed to come out in a few months, right? The next Stormlight Archives book supposed to be out in a few months. We can send some with drop and stroop waffles. I need to know what stroop waffles are. This we have to look this up right now. Stroop waffles. Oh, oh, I've had things like this. I know what those are. Those are yummy. Those are yummy. I have had those before. I'd never heard them pronounced stroop waffles. 
I don't wouldn't I would I don't remember what I would have called those. But they're delicioso. Yum 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 yum. Bosch bowl won't survive. <laughs> drop must be the most disgusting thing in the world. Oh, drop is a thing? All right. We are way off topic now. Huh? Stand by, viewers who came here to see something different than this. Sh uh, drop and drop. Stroop. Drop stroop waffles. What is drop? Translate. Translate to English, please. No, no, English, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, Drop Magazine? I don't understand. Drop is a separate thing. Drop Candy, oh. <laughs> oh, Spice Drops? Oh, these. Uh, let's look up Drop Candy Netherlands. Yeah, because it's got to be the right kind of thing. If it's if it's spice drops, oh, black licorice, oh yeah, oh yeah, I could totally move to the Netherlands. <laughs> zoot drop, zoot drop. We got another presidential election coming up. Are we gonna get? Oh yeah, I could eat those. Black licorice, heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. I'm going to get some. We got a, we got a little store here that imports all kinds of stuff from Europe. I'll see if I can find some. I'll try them out. Tell you what I think. In English, it's licorice. Yeah. Hit that thumbs up. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles, for encouraging the thumbs up -edness. Because tiki. What's tiki? Now, so this is fun. This is like, this is the Netherlands uh, cultural hour. I don't know what Tiki is. Pay without request? A bank? Oh, it's a way to send money. Oh, okay. So that's like our Venmo. Gotta head off. Too many duchies. <laughs> see, see you later, Quindor. Kuberdon? Okay. Well, if we could ever get rid of this Rona thing, we, we could make a trip out to the Netherlands. What the heck is a Kuberdon? Let's just look up images. Ooh. Oh, that's different. Whoa. Belgian candy. Oh, that looks yummy. What does that taste like? Is it a berry flavor? See Discord. Okay. Oh, you're a good dude, Frank. Thank you, my buddy. <laughs> and thank the ninja for me. Thank the ninja for me, Frank. Very, very kind. Very sweet. All right, what do you got here? Uh, Mark says, media player button, press a button, smart things event, squeeze box. What's this for, Mark? I'm missing something. This was for when we were doing the... um. Oh, the butterfly. Did you make any thin or 3D printed like a butterfly? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, Henry, no, I'm sorry. I was going to do a butterfly uh, animation like these things. I was going to do one with the butterfly. It does look like Dracula's candy, huh? It's like all bleeding. It looks like a tooth and it's bleeding. These are awesome. Hope they taste good. <laughs> I'll have to get some to find out. Oh, man. All right. Back on track. Let's get back huh? on track here. Let's get back on track. We got to do some uh, real stuff. All right. What else do you guys want to do? So I wanted to just kind of go through these. Um, I wanted to go through this and I think we accomplished that. I think, you know, parallel, we saw what it did. We explained what it did. I think I'd have to come up with a different automation to really see the effect play out. But this is this summary diagram right here is what you need. So uh, when you are constructing an automation, if you, this lets you add some real nice complexity. So if you're structuring an automation that you think is going to have to have some 
complexities to it, like what happens if somebody presses a button more than once or uh, motion is reactivated or something else happens, somebody else comes home, you know, all those kinds of things. You can look at these different modes and think about which one applies to that automation scenario and uh, make it happen. So great work, Frank. Great work. Tell Ludias congratulations. I'll tell him too, but tell him when you, next time you see him. All right. And I'm going to read some comments for a minute. Have I played with Grossy? We did look at Grossy. Got my wife to buy into it. All right. So raspy. So she's a, she's a grocery shopper lister. Mine, my missus is all about, um, when she does a list, which she doesn't always do for one, she doesn't like to do a list. She only, she only does a list when absolutely necessary for things she thinks she's going to forget. She, I think she enjoys the roaming around the store and I can't blame her. Usually when she goes to the store, she doesn't have anybody with her. Um, if she goes with kids, then it's not nearly as pleasurable. Um, so when she goes to the store without kids, I think she likes to roam, take a, take a little time. Uh, in that case, she doesn't want to follow a list. <laughs> Only read Mistborn. What's the name of that book again? Which one? Which one? The um the Stormlight Archives is the one, Gary, that we were talking about. Stormlight Archives. Really good. Really cool. First book is called Words of Radiance, I think. Check out Stormlight Archives. There's supposed to be, I think, going to end up being five, five books. Watch the stream of the recording and understand everything that was said. Just having fun. Sorry. Hey, Ramses. We are just having fun. By the way, I don't see that missile yet. How long is it going to take to get here? <laughs> yeah, so Amazon Echo shopping list is what my wife uses. Now, Seamus, is there a way to uh, integrate the Amazon Echo shopping list into Home Assistant? We may have talked about that already. I don't remember. So, Are the thread options available in YAML? Oh, uh, well, here's what it would look like. We can totally look at what it would look like. Let's look at what the YAML looks like because you can you can see the YAML. So if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to pull it up, you could go here, and we'll just go to automations.yaml and we'll look at it. Blade webhook test. That was part of the old trigger thing. Um, <laughs> So there it goes. You put it right there. Here, here it is. Um, well, now these are all mode single. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it added. It went in and put mode single in all of them. So you put it. So here's what it looks like when you have an automation. This is an old. This is an automation from last night. Oh, okay. So maybe it didn't put them all in. It just put the ones in that I did last night. Yeah. Uh, so it's in. The, it's in line with trigger, condition, action, and then it's just mode, and then whatever mode you want. So if you want to type it in, there you go. The way of Kings. Oh, you're right. The way of Kings. Wait, the way of Kings is the first one. Sorry. Word of radiance is the second one. There you go. Thank you, Kuba. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Which discord channel should I read guys? Um, if you want to read, uh, which part is it that you want? Jerry Yeah, I did raspy. I did look at uh, Grossy back at the beginning. Of course, there are typed YAML examples in the release blog. Of course, of course. Here. Now there's a script. Action. Mode, single. All right, all right. Well, all right, all right. Added the home assistant. Home assistant? Oh, have you been my Discord? There's my Discord stuff, uh, Jerrion, if you're not there. Which I don't know if it's... Like somebody said the bot's not working. There's more than home assistant. Yeah, in mine, there is more than home assistant. Yes, there is. There's quite a bit. We often talk about... There being too much. It was from when you were searching for the button automation stuff. We got past it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate you helping me go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Here's the names of all the, here's all the channels. We got 
uh, we do have a suggestion box now. That's pretty fun. Um, cameras, hardware, electric cars. Nobody types in electric cars except me. <laughs> uh, home assistant, Lovelace, security, node red, VMs, alternative installation. That's interesting. I didn't even know that was there. Servers, uh, hacks, influx, room assistant, and notifications, and ESP Home, and Tesmoda, and HA Switchplate, and Holiday LEDs, and 2U Convert, and Hyperion, and ZB, and Z-Wave, and projects in 3D printing, and reviews, and pixel heads, and Twitch. Oh, these are locked up ones for different people. Anywho's. <laughs> Miguel, what is up, Miguel? Miguel, do I have your address? I, d I think I need your address, Miguel, if I don't have it. Make sure you make sure you've messaged me. WhatsApp? Does anyone know if I can run Hasayo with any Wi-Fi dongle? I got Pi with no Wi-Fi and currently only place the Ethernet in the living room. Come here. I heard you open the door. How's it going? Okay. You guys are back already? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't very long. I'm not going to show anybody your dancing video. <laughs> uh, when I'm, I'm sending out the LEDs, this co next couple days, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We'll have one. We'll have the first few tomorrow, and then once we leave more envelopes, <laughs> and then we'll send it out to you today. Yes, Miguel, shoot me a reminder. That will help. Supervised home assistant. Yes. I don't know. Will it work with any Wi-Fi dongle? I don't know. As long as it's there, you go. I have I'm a really hard time with your name, Tune Tune de Buen de Buenas Tune de Buenas Tune de Buenas Tune de Buenas. Uh, Ramses, is it possible to do automation so that when the level of methane in the toilet exceeds automation throws? Uh, yes, um, yes. The 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 key link there is to find an, a suitable methane sensor which I have yet to find. So if you find a good methane sensor, let me know. <laughs> no, I, I can't, Seamus, I can't let you see it. I can't post it on YouTube. I think I will be banned. Let me just paint the picture for you, okay? Here is Zachary at 6'2", probably. Yeah, 6'2". 6'2", 240, 30. Yeah-ish. Okay, 230, 240. Uh, he's, he's got a big body. You've seen him stand back here. He also has a bit of a, of a little bit of a panza yep. in the front there. Mm -hmm. And um, Mrs. Z's, you guys knew that uh, she doesn't like the kids roaming around at night. We did all that stuff about uh, making the phone charging station and all that stuff, right? So the other night, Zach couldn't sleep. So he gets up and he knows, oh, so I, what I did was I, if there's motion in that area, Mrs. Z's gets a little thing on her phone, right? So there's a camera and it'll send her a little picture through Blue Iris. So uh, this monkey decides he's going to get up and just start dancing in the hallway, knowing that his mom is going to get these these pictures and video and that it's going to record. And of course, he's just wearing his underwear, right? He's wearing these tight little underwear and he's this big old kid and he's dancing around in the dark by himself. There you go. There's the mental picture. I've got about 15 minutes of him dancing. And then he comes in my office and dances around and it's pretty funny. Uh, incompatible mail driver has delivered some of my stuff to the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I haven't mailed it yet, but I'll mail it. Uh, I'll mail it next, probably tomorrow or the next day. Working on some LED path lights in, in our Arizona sun, solar lights take a dump after a year or two. Going to use them for Christmas displays and other holiday displays. Nice. Where in Arizona? Where in Arizona, Raspy? Yeah, cousin going to Arizona. Ah, is that where he's going? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> My wife is a great methane sensor. I'm a great methane sensor too, but I'd like to be warned before I know, <laughs> before, so I know it's coming. <laughs> it's like, get out of there. Um, okay. Thank you. Nah. <laughs> okay. Where were we? A couple more things. We got time for like one more. We got time for like one more thing. Yeah. One, one more thing. One more thing. Timo. All right. Timo. I can remember that. Timo. From USA, me, Ramses? Yes. About an hour south of Flagstaff, 20 minutes from Sedona, just below Jerome. Okay. I know Sedona. Um, I know Flagstaff, obviously, I know Phoenix. I know like Payson. 
But so I don't know what 20 minutes from Sedona. So straight south or west or east? East, west? Only catch cats, never kids on the cameras. What city am I in, Ramses? I am in near Salt Lake City, Utah. Not not terribly far from there. Not exactly Salt Lake, but but pretty close. All right, there you go, Miguel. Okay. Thank you. Let's choose which one to get. Oh, Henry. Uh there's a new have you guys seen? Maybe this is what we can we can end on this uh last thing. Somebody was telling me about a new a new ender printer or a new cruelty printer. A new cruelty printer, and it's not not the one that I showed. I thought it was like a six. All 3D printers. I think it's a CR, I want to say it's a CR6 or something like that. Have you guys heard of this thing? The Ender 3 is always a solid choice. This is for, um, yes, that's it. The CR6E. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. Is it in here somewhere? Do they not have a search bar? Yeah, it's on the weird side. Well, it should give me, here we go. Sold out. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, that's because it's sold out, I'm sure. It's not that much. Yeah, we were looking at this one because it has a handle here and it's supposed to be pretty, it's supposed to be pretty good. I don't know what makes it so great, but it's supposed to be pretty good. What makes it so good? Anybody know? The CR6 Max is looking good. St. Petersburg, Russia. Yeah. I am so good guy. You is so good guy too, Ramses. You make me laugh. Ruski. <laughs> 429. That's a good price. So what makes it so good? So intelligent level free system, modular design, new nozzle and extruder structure. So are you telling me I need to get one of these? Is that what you guys are saying? I need, because what I need is more 3D printers, right? Mm -hmm, no. Obviously. <laughs> uh, Chep did a comparison. Who's Chep? Is Chep a YouTube person that I'm not following? Oh, I have to fix that. It's a Kickstarter. Oh, wow. Well, I, uh, you know, I was going to say I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to Chep. PCB Vice. That's cool. Oh, I like that. What's he got here? Walking robot. Oh, fun. Okay, well, Chip, we're new, we're buddies now, Chip. <laughs> you can never have too many 3D printers. It's kind of like clamps, right? <laughs> Great marketing. 3D printer for dummies. Oh, is that what it's marketed as? <laughs> Are you talking about this one? This one is the... This one is the, why does it not have a thing here that says Kickstarter, if that's the case. They took all the add-ons people added to their other ones and sold it to you all at once. Well, that's smart. Don't know where I'm going to use it for. Yeah. As auto bed leveling, run out detection, basically a better Ender 3. Okay, cool. And for 430, that's like nothing. Okay, we'll watch for that. We'll watch for that for sure. And it looks nice and small. I need a small one. So I've got my, I've got my Lulz bot Taz five and I keep the more streeter on there most of the time. So it makes big honking things like this. It makes big honking things like this, ah, like this. Um, so it makes really big things like this really fast. Like this whole thing right here is only like, four hours or something to make one of these. So that's not too, that's, that's good. And now I've got that resin printer, which when I want to make something really small and really delicate and really precise, and when I want to clean up a big mess, that's what I'll do. But I need something in between. I need something that I can put a small extruder on. Prusa Mini? Maybe. I'm sure all I have to do is ask Banggood Buddy Woody. Hey, new subscriber. All right. Just saw your last video on the Digi Uno RGB. Can you talk a bit more about that? 
Is it mainly for individually addressable LEDs? Yes, the Dig Uno Moonlight. Thank you for subscribing, by the way. Here you go. This is for new subscribers. Uh, the Dig Uno is for individually addressable LEDs, like WS2812, 2811, and then all the others, SKs, and I think all those. Well, it, does it have a, it does, but if you run LED, WLED, WLED uh, is pretty much for the three, the three wire type, the, you know, the ground, it's got data, ground, and five volts or, t or 12 volts. Um, yes, but Quindor does have other boards. Like if you wanted to do something with like uh, something that's all the same colors, whatever those are called, I can't remember. Uh, analog, if you wanted to do analog stuff, um, or Quinn, I guess go to Quinn LED. Quinn LED .info. Sudo reboot just subscribed. <laughs> I love that. That's nice. Sudo reboot. Uh, so Quindor has designed a whole bunch of different boards. He's got the Quinn LED Quad, the Deca, the Deca Plus. Um, so you can go here, and what he has here is a whole bunch of uh, guides for building all these boards. Um, so if you had like a bunch of analog RGBs you wanted to use, he, he's got the board designed, and he's got all the parts, and he's got soldering guides to show you how to put it together and all that stuff. Um, but this Dig Uno board was just so like when he came out with this Dig Uno board, I said, oh, please, can you make these pre-assembled? Because you, you there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want this that are not going to be able to or want to solder it themselves. And so he did. Finally, after about probably about nine months of working out the details, um, that's what he's done. So they 3D printed a house a few weeks ago. Nice. Really? Nice. You know what I've been watching? You gotta, I gotta show this and then we're going to go in just a couple minutes. Um, modular. Yeah, I know. No, I don't want notifications from that. Modular house. Have you guys seen this on AliExpress? You can buy these. Where are they? These dome houses. Oh, these aren't the ones I'm thinking of. I keep getting them on Facebook. They're like these domes. Uh, dome house. You can buy them from AliExpress. No, no, that's kind of cool though. Transparent bubble. Okay, I gotta admit that's kind of cool. Look at that. It's like a big old teenage hamster wheel. <laughs> yes. Why don't I have one of these? This is awesome. My own little bio biodome. Oh, anyways, there's they have others. Uh dome dome building. Shelter. Maybe it's maybe it's under shelter. Oh, there it is. Here it is. This thing. And there's a whole bunch of these. So I don't know why. And like maybe it's because of the Rona or whatever, but I keep getting these in my feed my Facebook feed. They like want me to start a little community of bug out I, <laughs> anyways pretty sweet but it's like you know 24 square meters so these are these are nice little playhouses or something what i would want to do with this is make a hobbit hole oh yeah right just bury it and make a hobbit hole and they're not that much i mean for these if, i mean if it's a, if it works right i don't know Step inside and it'll take care of the rest. What is it? A death trap? An easy bake oven. <laughs> uh, Gavin says, what cameras am I using for security? Most of my cameras are Amcrest. All right, Sam Phoenix, thank you for subscribing. And you've been around for a long time. Do you like unicorns or planes? So unicorns or planes. How about unicorns? Thanks for showing up and re-upping. And re Sam, how you doing? We just been right now. We're at, we're winding down. So we talked about um, Home Assistant 10 or 113, and specifically the changes that were made to automation modes, which you guys called threading, right? So it changes how you can um, manipulate when things happen uh, and get re-triggered in a in a um, automation. All right, and for that was oh gosh, I missed who I saw somebody else subscribing and I missed the thing. A bit like Earthships, pressure cooker. 
How well do they ship them? Are they inflatable? That's crazy. You know, I don't, I can't imagine these are inflatable. I think they're modular, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, am I just, maybe, maybe it's in parts. Yeah, maybe it's in parts like an igloo, Zach says. I mean, like, how am I not going to buy one of these? <laughs> right? Like, tell me how you're not going to. Yeah, it is. It's in parts. Good job. Gosh, you have such a good brain. Product installation. So here you go. So here you go. Groundwork treatment. Okay, so you make some groundwork and then the modular installation. Then you can put in some windows and a door and you're finished. Yay. I want it. I want it. $600 shipping. Yeah, but you are buying like a, you know, this is $3,000 thing. And, but they have different sizes. So like we want to need to look at their store because they've got a whole bunch. They have different shapes. Uh, they might. I think most of them are domes like this. But look at that. Isn't that cool? Like, I think that's really cool. I think that is super cool. That's why it's in your feed. That may be. <laughs> they knew. Look at that, man. That is so awesome. Those aren't real people. This is The Sims. <laughs> uh, this is all in meters. So, and then they are sterilely being packed into trucks. So they do have some, oh, here's some other shapes. So here's one with like a big open. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Oh, and here's like a double decker. Fire resistance, polystyrene foam. Wait a minute, polystyrene foam. Well, here's a two-story one. Look at that one's two stories. I'm totally moving into one of these. <laughs> but you do not need it. I do not need it. You're right. It's totally a bomb shelter. Oh, a raid. You Should we do a raid? Is that what you're, what are we fixing today? Tomb Raid? You, you make some think for money. You have some official pages in Russia to rich people. Do I have some things to make money? <laughs> Is that your, oh, that's your channel? Yandex. Ramses, are you on Discord? Hook me up on Discord. Garage for the bug. Oh, I totally need a storage unit for the bug. Like, I, I kind of like this one with the wide open thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But you, what if you put, I mean, you put two of these next to each other, right? And all of a sudden it's huge. Oh, cannot deliver to the United States. What? That's discrimination. This one they'll deliver. It's got like a sunroof. Look at that sunroof thing up there. This is a dang house, man. You could buy a house for, but you know what? It doesn't have plumbing or bathroom or, I don't know. I wonder how, I wonder what the weather's like in those things. They got this one. This is a little I'm bit sure different. You insulation. Insulate the insides. I bet you that's pretty well insulated. Look at that big, thick plastic stuff. Mm -hmm. I got to try it. I got to try it. And then this, this looks like they put cement on the outside. They like covered the outside with stucco. Earthquake resistance. I mean, you could totally just cover that with dirt and rocks and like bury it under a hill. And make I mean, the hobbit. thing is, like, yeah, make a hobbit hole. Like, you see that door, the windows right there? Yeah. Right? The, you mean at the top? Yeah, those two. But the, the big like next to those windows, that you could like literally just carve out. Like, make it a top, circle? Make it a circle, right? Yeah. That's it. I want it for the backyard. Who needs plumbing? <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> I, I really do. So then it becomes a pizza people oven. Pizza, pizza people pizza oven. Yeah, Facebook knows us better than we know ourselves. They've put that in my feed before I even knew I wanted it. And as soon as they did, I wanted it. No, oh, but seriously, I think that thing looks, I think those look really cool. So I, it, I don't know. I have to show my wife and we have to do some talking and I cannot imagine that I will get it anytime soon, but... But this, I think, for my teenager, for Zoe. I think Zoe would love this. We can just put her out in the mountain. Just put her outside. Yeah, this is definitely inflatable. Is he blowing it up with his... No, I think he's tying it off. But this, wow. is, this is a fan on the other side blowing air in. So this one is definitely inflatable. Can which I... is still super cool. I don't know why you'd want that as much. I mean, it's kind of neat, but... Like... Well, how about this? Put your kids in a ha in a hamster wheel. 
Ah, they have so much cool stuff. Just buy this. You want it. Now automate it. <laughs> Tasmoda bubble. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Good times on AliExpress. She... <laughs> She's trapped. She did not want to get in the bubble. She's like, you let me out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness sakes. That's too much. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The pool balls, they look like fun. An air quality monitor. Yeah, that's what happens. This girl's like, ah, oh, you farted, get out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So fun. So fun. Look at this. And Zoe made me pay all that extra money for those mats. Look at how big a mat we could have got. These are the same mats, I bet. Those are the same mats. She just, Zoe just has, you know, that one company that's selling them for so much. Whatever. I want one of those wheels too. Okay. That's enough. I've already spent everybody's Christmas money. Let's call up the kids for sign off. That was a good time. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's time for sign off. It's time for sign off. And these are the these are the doors on the top. Oh, what is this? Acrylic. Look at these. This is like Legos. Those are Legos. Oh, they are Legos. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought those were, I, I looked at that and I thought, oh, that is Legos. I thought that was, those were for the buildings. We got twins. Yay. Yay we got we twins. Got twins. All right. All right. So the twins are our cousins from Las Vegas. Hi. Well, you're. And we are going to, how do we want to sign off twins? I don't know. Like we're excited for sign off. Should we sign off? Everybody should look at their twin and sign off like your twin. Me and Grace will be twins. Okay? Ready? You got to get in the camera. Get in the camera. Go that way. Go that way. And then look at each other. So you got to do a mirror image. So if I'm going to if I'm gonna do this arm, then you got to do that arm. Okay? And then there'll be the twins. Okay. All of you pick a twin out there in the world. Okay. Let's come this way. So you're in the camera. Okay. We're signing off like twins, which just means you have to do the opposite. So mirror image. Okay? Ready? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. <laughs> that was fun guys hey thanks for being here thanks everybody for your help have a great week and uh see you next sunday bye, bye.